Reggie. Yeah? Guess what? I'm going to be the Toastmaster of the Sports Writers' Luncheon. No. And guess who's going to sit at the head table right next to me? Who? My son. Rusty? How about that? Oh, how nice. How nice. Wait till you hear it. He's going to jump out of his shoes. You know who's uh, going to sit next to him? No. Johnny Unitas. Oh, darling, that's wonderful. Wonderful, I should say. Who's Johnny Unitas? <laughs> He's a beer salesman from Milwaukee. <laughs> oh, Johnny Unitas. He's only the star quarterback for the Baltimore Colts. Well, darling, how do you expect me to know that? I never go to basketball games. <laughs> Johnny Unitas is a football player. Well, what's the difference? Basketball, football? I mean, one wears long pants, one wears short pants. <laughs> you know, something been puzzling me for the longest time. How a brilliant fella like me got hooked by a dumb girl like you. Well, darling, I think I can answer that. And I can cook, too. <laughs> hey, kid, have I got news for you. Guess what? What? Guess who's going to sit next to you at the sports riders' luncheon? Who? Johnny Unitas. Well, let's have a little animation. I said you're going to sit next to Johnny Unitas. Well, Bretty, he he's a very important football player on the Baltimore Horses. <laughs> Colts. What's the difference? Mom, I know who Johnny Unitas is. I also know I'm not going to sit next to him. Why not? I have to stay after school tomorrow. Oh, oh, not tomorrow. Rusty, what happened? What did you do now? You'll never believe this, but I didn't do a thing. Then why do you have to stay after school? Oh, Miss Johnson's keeping the whole class. Why? why? A couple of the kids were fooling around, so now everybody's got to stay for an extra hour. And she had to pick tomorrow of all days. Well, Rusty, don't you think if you told her you had to go to an important sports luncheon, she'd let you off? A lot she cares about sports. All she knows about football or basketball is that in one of them you wear short pants. <laughs> Can you imagine anyone that dumb? Well, you, you run into that type once in a while. <laughs> Oh, this is awful. This is absolutely awful. After all the trouble I went through, maybe if I talked to her, maybe I could reason with her. Reason with old pickle puss? Here now. <laughs> Don't be disrespectful. Students shouldn't call their teachers pickle puss. Well, that's what everybody calls her. She's the toughest teacher in the whole school, Dad. She loves to hand out punishment. Now, no teacher loves to hand out punishment. Pickle puss does. <laughs> but she starts handing out punishment, it's like someone eating salted peanuts. There's no stopping. <laughs> Think she's still at the school? She might be. Why? Well, I figure maybe if I go over and talk to her and use a little tact, a little diplomacy, maybe uh, I might get her to let you off this one time. You want to bet? Now, Russell, you just leave this to me. I mean, after all, she's human. You want to bet? <laughs> you're not in the wrong, are you? No. Okay, your cause is just. Yes. Couple that with my ability to handle people, I'm pretty sure that in no time at all, I'll have your teacher eaten right out of my hand. I wouldn't try, Dad. What have I got to lose? Your hand. All right. <laughs> I'm uh, Danny Williams, Mr. Williams. Uh, oh, of course, you're Russell's father. That, that's right, that's right. I hope I'm not intruding. Uh, no, 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 I'm just finishing up. Just finishing up. My goodness, teacher's work is never done, is it? Well, I can always find something to do if I look hard enough. You know, I, I always say it, it's too bad that more parents don't appreciate you teachers, you know? Hmm. Is that, uh... Is that what you say? Yeah, that, I, I always say that, yes. And, and I say it because I mean it, sincerely. I'm glad. For a moment, I thought you were leading up to a request to excuse Rusty from staying after school tomorrow. Now, <laughs> oh, Miss Johnson, is that fair? I'm sorry. <laughs> is that all, Mr. Williams? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Well, there, there is one thing. I'm... A little surprised to see a teacher of your caliber, I mean, punishing a whole class just because a couple of the kids got out of line. I mean, 
uh, you're doing a great job uh, outside of that one hasty, thoughtless, unjust act. <laughs> I, I just thought I'd mention that in passing. <laughs> well, uh, let's consider it past, shall we, Mr. Williams? <laughs> now, see here, pickle push. <laughs> Miss Johnson. Now, this sports luncheon means a lot to my son. It may be trivial to you, but it isn't to him and it isn't to me either. And I think you ought to let him off tomorrow so he can attend. I don't agree with you. I didn't think you would. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be doing your son any favor if for one minute I let him think that the rules that apply to the other children don't apply to him. Look, I'm not asking not to punish him. Just don't punish him tomorrow. Punish him some other time. <laughs> Mr. Williams, before a teacher can educate a room full of students, she must, she must get control of them. If I fail to maintain discipline over my students, I fail as a teacher, because knowledge must be crammed into their stubborn little minds against considerable resistance. Like any other healthy young animal, a child would rather play than work. Yeah, but my methods of maintaining discipline may seem harsh to you, but they work for me. I've been using them for over 30 years. 30 years? That's a long time. We have a saying in, in show business, don't go too long without changing your act. It might get a little stale. <laughs> You're not the only one who thinks I should uh, change my act. The principal of this school agrees with you. Excuse me. As a matter of fact, for some time now, he's been wanting to discuss the question of my retirement. He feels, too, that my policy of firmness with my students is a little old-fashioned. Well, there's, there's a little difference between firmness and harshness. I mean, uh, I should imagine you could accomplish just as much by being kind and gentle. Mr. Williams, my grandfather, who came from the Deep South, used to tell a story about a farmer who was stuck in the road with a mule who wouldn't budge. He was having a dreadful time with him. A stranger came along and said, uh, can I help you? And the farmer said, well, he said, maybe you can. He says, I got a mule here, I can't move. And the stranger said, well, that's because you don't understand mules. I do. You gotta treat him gentle. Gotta treat him kind. And so saying, he leaned over, picked up a log, and smacked the mule right between the eyes. <laughs> the farmer was pretty upset, and he said, how come you hit my mule like that? I thought you said you gotta treat him gentle. You gotta treat him kind. And the stranger said, that's right, that's right. <laughs> But first, you gotta get his attention. <laughs> well, these kids aren't mules. And I guarantee if I were their teacher, I could get their attention without clobbering between the eyes. Mr. Williams, I get the distinct impression that, uh, that you think you can do my job better than I can. I, I didn't say that. But since you did, I won't argue the point. Good day. Uh, Mr. Williams. How would you like a chance to, um, to prove your point? Huh? Quite coincidentally, this week, Friday, there's a school-wide experiment in cooperation with the Parent Teachers Association. So? On that one day, interested parents will be given an opportunity to conduct classes. They can become acquainted through actual experience with some of our problems. Now, since you are such uh, an interested parent, I think you'd make an excellent candidate. You want me to teach your class? That's right. And in a phrase that's um, more succinct than scholarly, it'll give you a chance to um, put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> <coughs> I'll be here Friday. Good. <laughs> will include algebra, current events, and biology. You are to give Mr. Williams your undivided attention. His authority is the same as mine. <clears throat> now, I can stay and help you get started if you wish, and uh, find a place at the back of the room, oh. or I can leave. No, no. It's entirely up to you. It's all right. Sorry, Miss Johnson. You go right ahead and have the morning off. I'm pretty sure we'll get along real fine, won't we, kids? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you should run into a, any trouble, I suggest that you try some of my antiquated methods of discipline. You mean, get his attention first? <laughs> <laughs> they can get out of 
out of hand pretty quickly. Well, I'm not expecting any trouble. Now, I'll be back later to check. Fine, fine. <clears throat> now, class. <laughs> Attention, class. Attention. <clears throat> class, we are supposed to take biology first today. Yes? Oh, we don't have to waste any time on biology, Mr. Williams. Oh, why not? Because we know the whole book. Is that so? For instance, the ankle bone's connected to the shin bone. The shin bone's connected to the knee bone. The knee bone's connected to the thigh bone. The thigh bone's connected to the hip bone. All right. Okay, okay. The hip bone's connected to the... All right. Backbone. Thank you. Sit down. All right. I know what the backbone's connected to. Okay. All right. Just simmer down. Simmer down. Simmer down. Simmer down. Yes? What is it? I have a current events question. Current events? We're supposed to take biology now. But, sir, this is an important question. Oh? On current events? Yes, sir. Well, if it's important, what's the question? May I leave the room? <laughs> No, you may not leave the room. Stand up, young fella. What's uh, your name? Henry. Henry. All right, Henry. Uh, suppose we get to biology. Would you please tell me, uh, how does osmosis work? Don't ask me. I didn't even know he had a job. <laughs> Young lady, hand that note back to him. Uh, do you mind standing up, Mr. Bones? <laughs> I take it that note is being passed around for the whole class to read? Yes, sir. Well, I suppose we do it rather quickly and have you read it out loud to them. You want me to read it out loud? That's right. I want you to read it out loud. It says, is that his nose or is he eating a banana? <laughs> 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 uh, oh, you kids are wonderful. <laughs> Say, you know, you took me back a lot of years just now. This must be a pretty tough school then, huh? <laughs> First, uh, I like it. I like it tough because I, I was raised in a tough school. Oh, a real tough school. You, you kids should have seen the school I went to. You talk about tough. The seediest looking characters you ever saw. You'd walk down the corridors of our school and you'd see them there leaning against the lockers, you know, with the black leather jackets and the cigarette dangling down the lip and the scars on the faces. And those were the teachers. <laughs> tough. You never saw such tough kids in your life. And the toughest kid in our school was a kid named Fingers Patman. Fingers Patman was the toughest kid I ever saw in my whole life. Hated anybody with a face. Hated him. <laughs> and he used to call him Fingers because he was fast with the fingers. He could empty out the five and dime faster than they could fill it. <laughs> so you, you read today where kids think it's smart, it's smart to steal hubcaps? Fingers had never stooped to such a low thing. As a matter of fact, he was our leader, would never let us do it. We never thought of stealing hubcaps. I mean, people in our neighborhood get up in the morning, walk to their cars, they always found their hubcaps. No car, just hubcap. <laughs> we were plenty tough, I want to tell you, but real tough kids. But we outgrew it, like every generation did. But for a while there, we got to believe in our own publicity. And that's what's the matter with the teenagers today, you know? They believe their own publicity. And they're getting too much publicity. You can't pick up a Sunday newspaper or a magazine without reading the inevitable article, What's Wrong With Our Teenagers Today? I read a magazine article the other day that asked the stupid question, can the children of today be the mothers and fathers of tomorrow? I mean, that's the silliest question you ever heard. Can the children of today be the mothers and fathers of tomorrow? All I can say is they better because nobody else is warming up. <laughs> <laughs> but I gotta go along with public opinion against you on one point. That's your music. Oh, your music is sick. Oh, your music? Have you ever seen you kids going down the street with a transistor radio stuck in your ear? <laughs> now, nobody knows what you're listening to, but you're going like this. Vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever went home like that, my father would have sprinkled flea powder on me. <laughs> Your music is... Let me give you an idea. Let's have a sample of music. 
and one, two, three, yeah. Do we 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 do and said, yeah, you need a partner. Miss Johnson will be here any second. It's almost 12 o'clock now. Come on, get to your seats. Now look, kid, you, we, we, didn't, we didn't get very much work done today, you know. We didn't get any work done today. Well, <laughs> let's kind of keep that our little secret, huh? Now look, I want to level with you. I'm not here today just because it's parents as teachers day. I, I'm here because, well, I bragged to Miss Johnson that I could handle the class better than she could. And, well, uh, I would like it very much if you'd be looking rather studious when she comes in. And remember what I told you earlier about how to greet her? So, help me out, will you? Sure. sure. Yeah. 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 Now, now, yeah. Thank you. Get your noses into your books now. Look very studious. And as I, uh, uh, the class, Miss Johnson is here. Good afternoon, Miss Johnson. <laughs> well, this is a surprise. A surprise? Well, frankly, it, it isn't quite what I expected. Hmm? Well, I hope you're not disappointed. You haven't had any trouble? You look like I've had any trouble. No. No, it doesn't. Congratulations, Mr. Williams. I take my hat off to you. Oh, well. This is quite a revelation. You were right and I was wrong. Hmm? Well, if you'll excuse me, there's a subject the principal's been wanting to talk to me about for some time. And this certainly looks like the right time. Oh, no, no. Wait, wait a minute, Miss Johnson. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Kids, on your honor now. Just be quiet till I get back. Miss Johnson. Miss Johnson, please. Yes. Just a minute. I, I hope I haven't hurt your feelings. Oh, don't apologize. You may have done me a favor. What? The principal is constantly telling me that I've fallen behind the times. And I didn't believe him. But if a person like you completely without teaching experience, can walk into a class and achieve with ease the, the, the thing that I battle for daily, a well-behaved, receptive, cooperative class, then my contribution isn't as indispensable as I thought. Now, wait, Miss Johnson, please. Don't be too hasty about this. I... Mr. Williams, there comes a day when even the most stalwart battleship Heads for the mothball fleet. Yeah, but... And now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going down to the principal's office and suggest that he lay in a good supply of mothballs. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Now, you promised to come back and, and check on me, Mr. remember? Mr. Williams, I have already conceded your victory. I, I know, but you haven't checked on what I've done with the class. Now, oh, be fair. Mr. Williams, well, I at don't... at least know, just really, check and I see what we've I done. I know what I want oh, to do. Oh, 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 class. Oh, nice to see you so attentive. Uh, Miss Johnson has returned to uh, check up on our work this morning. So we're gonna have a little quiz. Uh, Mr. Bones, if you get up, please, and uh, tell us what we covered in uh, biology today. Biology? Biology. Well, sir, we didn't get around to that. Oh, my, so we didn't. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, yes. Veronica, uh, how did we do in algebra today? Today? T today. Well, sir, we didn't get to that either. My goodness, we didn't get to algebra either. We kind of sort of blew current events, too, didn't we? Mr. Williams, just what has been going on in this classroom? A ball. <laughs> <laughs> We've been telling jokes and dancing and singing. I did part of my nightclub act for him. Told him all about the tough school I was raised in. A lot tougher than this one. <laughs> oh, there's a postscript to that story I was telling you about Fingers, Patman, and the guys. 
Do you know where fingers wound up? One of the greatest surgeons in our country. And the rest of my class? Judges, lawyers, doctors, merchants, and regular work and Joes. All solid citizens. And one nightclub entertainer. <laughs> yup. That motley looking group, that incorrigible bunch of tough guys in my class, all became solid citizens because of the miraculous work of the Miss Johnson of our day. We had a ball in school, lots of fun like you're having. Only your generation doesn't have the luxury that our generation had. And your teachers have a much tougher job than our teachers did. You see, they're racing against time because the enemies of the free world the enemies of our way of life are using education as a weapon to destroy our way of life. And you young people have got to use this same weapon, education, to defend our way of life, to safeguard it. Don't goof off, kids. Prepare yourselves. And tomorrow's America, with all its rich rewards, will be yours. Well, if uh, you're going to get prepared, I better get out of here and let you get at it. Uh, Mr. Williams, where do you think you're going? I'm going to get a hot dog. I'm starved. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Williams, I shall expect you back here right after lunch. You want me to come back here? Your agreement was to conduct this class for the entire day. I'm not a teacher, and you know it. Yes, I know. But on my salary, I can't afford nightclubs, and I want to see the show, too. Yeah. It's not fair. Hmm? What's the matter with you? I have to stay after school tomorrow. What? Teacher says I was whispering in class. Well, were you whispering? Well, not very loud. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stay after school tomorrow. The brownies are going to the zoo. Daddy, can't you write teacher a note and excuse me just this time? You want me to write a note to your teacher and get you out of it, huh? Yes, please. Let me see. What will I say in my note? Dear nice teacher. Yes? If my wonderful, adorable, little darling Linda broke the rules, she deserves to be punished. Very truly yours, Danny Williams. Well, don't expect much for Father's Day. 